Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert and you join me in the hallowed halls of Jigsaw 24 in London, Soho. This is the big one. I've got my greasy dabs on one of these. This is the new 2019 Mac Pro. The daddy, if you will. You can see on the screen right now, this is the specs of this machine. Um, and what we're gonna do is put it through our normal Mac Pro power test. Now you may say, why that particular test? It's just our benchmark. Trust me, this thing smokes everything else, but I want you to see exactly what we're running and exactly how ridiculous this thing can get. Um, this is not the full fat 55,000 pound version. This one comes in around about 10 grand, which is still a lot of money for a computer. But, you know, Spec for spec, pound for pound, you could spec a similar machine, a similar PC, Windows-based machine, uh, the new HP Z8, with the similar sort of spec, similar graphics card, all that sort of stuff, is not dissimilar money. So let's not pretend we're dropping 55 grand on this machine, comes in around about 10 for a well-specced audio and video machine. Uh, interestingly, you can see how we've split the memory on this machine, uh, PCIe cards, there's lots going on, storage, it's all running off NVMe um, storage, so they're using the PCI slots as drive bays effectively. We're running 64 gig of RAM, it's a 12 core machine, far from top spec, but you know, it's a well balanced machine. So let's dive into Pro Tools and let me show you around the session. So rather than show this from the ground up, I've pretty much set this to where things start to go wrong. And it's, it's impressive, let's say. So we have 128 tracks of audio, and this is the maximum we can run on a host-based system. This is host-based native processing. We do have an HDX card in this machine, which we'll switch over to in a minute, but this is the host-based test, if you like. Um, we're running 128 tracks of audio with tone and edits every second with automation. We also have 128 channel strips, 128 D-verbs, and 20 instances of Avid's 11 plugin, which we know is quite thirsty. Now, this is where things get silly. We have 412 instances of Boom running. 412. Now, any machine we've tested up to this point, including uh, my super spec PC, my Z840, my HP machine, we've been able to get around about 200 instances of boom running. Let's just start it up. The sound you're going to hear is coming from the Mac Pro's internal speaker. It sounds god awful because we're not worried about gain staging or any of that stuff. We're just making sure it works. So let me just show you how we have the system set up. 256 samples. We're using the um, Pro Tools aggregate I.O., we've configured it to be the internal um, core audio system. And we're using 192 voices. We don't have any of the voice packs enabled because we couldn't get any. Uh, and we're using a 256 meg disk cache. It's tiny. Watch this, boys and girls. Now you can see we're driving this machine as, about as hard as we could without getting um, CPU crashes or stops in the Pro Tools audio or the Pro Tools playback. 80%, um, we're running this about as hard as we could. Now bear in mind that's 400 tracks of boom and 20 instances of Avid's 11 plugin. Now what's interesting is if I disable these extra 10 Avid 11s and I then enable, okay, so that's now 512 booms, but only a mere 10 11s. Now what's interesting is that the graphics on the screen are quite sluggish. I mean, the system is still quite responsive. We can start and stop fairly easily, but it's not very pretty. Whereas what's interesting is on the S4, everything is running 
absolutely smoothly, absolutely as you'd expect it to, which is really quite interesting. Meaning this is probably a graphics bottleneck problem rather than an actual playback issue. And you can see again, we're hitting 81% on the Pro Tools system usage. If I go back to the beginning of the session, okay, so yeah, we have probably hit the theoretical limit of what we're gonna drive. But if you're running 512 instances of boom on your system, you're probably not quite right in the head. And that's still running 10 11s. That's pretty much as hard as we dare push this thing natively. So let's swap over to running HDX and see what happens there. So here we are, we've switched over to running on HDX. We have a single HDX card installed in this machine and running at 96K, we are limited to 128 voices. Now that's 128 tracks effectively, which means we can't use our 500 and odd instances of boom. It's unsupported. We pulled it back by around 200 to see what we ended up with. These are the offline tracks and then we have the online ones. And of course, we just don't have the available voice count to run those audio channels. So we actually only have 14 instruments and 128 tracks of audio. So in some ways, HDX people, you are limiting yourself. Because we only have an HDX one card, we are limiting the number of tracks of audio and instruments that we can deal with. So if you are running huge sessions and you are only on HDX one, you're probably gonna be selling your HDX card fairly soon. However, let's not pretend that we don't get some benefits. If I run this session back, we hit 100% on the CPU meter just then. Now, what's interesting is Pro Tools kept going. Now, we hit 100% because I've added another 40 11 plugins. We are now running 50 instances of 11, which is why we're maxing out the system usage in Pro Tools. But of course it's not crashing because the mixer engine is being handled by the HDX card. So actually HDX is more stable than a native host based system, but we are limited on track count. Now that's one of the things that HDX is good for. While we're limited on track count, Avid are guaranteeing it's going to work, but it is stable. It is proving that we can run an absolute ton of native processing alongside our HDX engine and it be 100% stable, even though on the CPU, 88, 66, 100, it keeps going, it keeps ticking. And of course, we haven't got that native instrument load running anymore. So things like the playback, the um, graphical interface is nice and smooth, everything's super stable. So there you go, two versions of the Mac Pro Power Test genuinely run on the new 2019, even though I think it should be the 2020 Mac Pro, but hey, um, the new cheese grater. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Thanks to the guys here at Jigsaw24 for looking after me and quite frankly, letting me play with one of these babies. My name's James Ivey and I'll see you again very soon for some more Gear Talk.